This video is proudly sponsored by TBC Live. It's as simple as that. If you want to build your NRL prediction knowledge, make sure you check out the TBC Live. Thumbs up if you think it is going to happen. Thumbs down if you think it's not going to happen. Tigers to score two tries in 10 minutes. We've got you. Melbourne Storm to make an error in three minutes. We've got you. Plenty of players, plenty of fun. Build the leaderboard weekly. And every week there is also a bonus event. This week is the Storm and the Dolphins in which you can win $50 all just for predicting footy and playing TBC Live. The best part about TBC Live is that it's free. So check out TBC Live on the App Store or Google Play Store today and join the ranks. Just click the link in my bio to download. Good day, guys. Welcome to my NRL Finals Week 1 tip. What a season of tipping. Upsets all year. And here we are, the top eight. It's crazy to think we're here in the final. I do apologize that these tips are late. I almost thought there was footy tonight on Thursday, but it turns out there's not. And it's the first Thursday without footy in a long time, which sucks, doesn't it? But now we've got four matchups to preview. Next week, we're going to have two, so it's less and less over the next couple of weeks. Let's speak, though, about NRL Week 1 tips. Again, I don't have anything to read off, but I have had a look at the team list as much as possible to memorize things. Casey McLean, who was looking really nice for the Panthers out this weekend, and uh, Paul Alamotti coming into that spot. Nathan Cleary has been cleared. He is 100% playing tomorrow night as the Panthers host a home final against the Sydney Roosters. And a Roosters side without Victor Radley, Sam Walker, and Brandon Smith still looking nice against the Rabbitohs the other day. Defence for any team in the league right now just isn't great. There's a few teams that are starting to get it right. The Roosters, man, leaking points all year, but still look like a premiership threat. Going to be very tough to get it done at Penrith Park, but, I mean, they're capable of doing it. They probably haven't beaten the Panthers in a number of years, but this seems like a time where if they can win this game, get themselves into a prelim. They put themselves in a really good spot, especially with the injury that they do have at the moment. As for the Penrith Panthers, a close game against the Titans, so they'll need to be much better. It was a good game, that one, last week. Who am I going to tip for this game in the qualifying final number one? Well, it's second versus third. and Both of these teams are evenly matched, but one of these teams just has too much experience and class against the park. I think the Penrith Panthers win a close one here. I think that the Roosters will be... Uh, a lot of people will go Penrith 13+. plus. They'll see Cleary, they'll go 13+, plus, 13+. Plus. Cleary is not going to be at his best. He is going to be good, man, but he's not going to be at his best. But he can break open that game and change it when needed. Dylan Edwards, in doubt, is a massive potential out. But they've got cover there. They've got depth. Penrith by 12, uh, 28 points to 16. I think the Roosters can put some points against that Panthers defense. But I think the Panthers advance to the prelims with a 12-point win over the Sydney Roosters. Next up at 4 o'clock on, sun, uh, sorry, on Saturday, not on Sunday, from Amy Park. It is the second qualifying final, this time between the Melbourne Storm and the Cronulla Sharks. Now, the Melbourne Storm, in the last four weeks, have shown me that they are a premiership threat. I've had my doubts on them all season, but now they look like the favourites to win it for a reason. And some people are saying they win the premiership by a country mile, and... I'll tell you what, the issue with the Storm for mine is that they have all these fantastic players that all want to do things, your Pappenhausens, your Grant, your Munster, and do they gel together in the finals? Whereas we've seen sometimes they just don't combine together that well when they're all going for the ball, all trying to do those razzle-dazzle, and it leads to the other team scoring points. They've started to put that behind them, got a good bench. One thing I want to say, I think Lazar, uh, Lazar, Lazarus Valapu looks fantastic and I would have kept him on the bench rather than on this reserves for a Melbourne pack that has struggled a little bit in the forge. You've still got Nelson, you've still got Eli Gattola, some great names there, but have struggled just that little bit in the forge. Taking on the Sharks side that everyone is calling pretenders. Now I called around round 9, 10 when they beat the Storm at Amy Park. If they won that game, they were contenders for mine. You know, they have lost probably three of their last 10, uh, three or four of their last 10 games in the Sharks, but they've made the top four for a reason. It's first versus fourth. 
minor premiership versus a team that has a lot of expectation to go out in straight sets. A lot of people are almost like, you know, they're no chance and they're going to lose 13 plus here at Melbourne. But something tells me the Sharks are going to keep this very close. And this is one of those games that Melbourne probably shouldn't win, but they are going to win. So look, I think the Storm win by four. I think this game's going to be incredibly close. Uh, I'm going to go with the Storm to win 22 points to 18. I think the Sharks can match up nicely against them. First try scorer for this one, I'll go with Will Warbrick to score the first try of the match. I think Cameron Munster will get one at any time in a big game like this, but don't be surprised if the Sharks put up some points here against the Storm defense that has been getting better, but has shown it. I, I don't know, I think the Sharks are a chance here, but I think the Storm win a close one by four. Next up is the Cowboys. They are hosting the Newcastle Knights and I owe the Cowboys a massive apology. They've been winning some games outside of Sydney. They've been beating some good top eight teams this season and they look like a dark horse right now. Uh, I, I was wrong. They got their defense great against the Bulldogs the other day. They've been playing better and better. Still some weird games that they've dropped this year. Lost by like 28 at home to the Broncos. I just don't get their season. They're up and down. If they win the premiership, it'd be absolutely crazy. But it'd be pretty cool because the Cowboys probably are one of those teams that kind of deserve it this year when you look at the team that they have beat and the position they're in. This is what I kind of expected them to be in the top four, close to the top four. And now they take on a Newcastle side that's finished in eight after a win against the Dolphins. Are they playing with confidence? Yes. Do they know that they struggle on the road in finals? Absolutely. They were torched by the Warriors last season to finish off their season, but the Cowboys are so up and down. And that's why this game feels like a 60-40 where you give the Knights a chance here. I haven't seen many people tip the Newcastle Knights because the Cowboys, you know, they have lots of origin players across their squad uh, and, and there's just too much power attack within them. Their attack is brilliant and their attack can get them to a grand final if they choose to play like that and go on this redemption arc that they've been on this season. So, look, I think the Cowboys win and win well here. I'm going to take the Cowboys to win 26 points to 12. Cowboys 13 plus. Cowboys win by 14 at Townsville and advance to week two of the final. I just don't see the Knights matching up with the Cowboys and containing their attack that well. They weren't able to score that many points. Their defense was great against the Dolphins, but their attack... Still man, still not kicking on 5th Newcastle. Let's see if they do it this weekend. Cowboys by 14. First try scorer. He's getting to the end of his Cowboys career. Just in case it is the end. Let's go with Valentine Holmes to score the first try of the match. The game is on Sunday at 4 o'clock. It is an elimination final between the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs and the Manly Seagulls. These teams met two weeks ago. I was at that game. That was the end of the Bulldogs run of home wins. Now they're at home in an elimination against a manly side that welcomes back Tom Trevojevic. Jason Saab is still out for this one. Uh, you know, <clears throat> having Tom back is a massive inclusion after missing him last week and losing at home by that score too to the Sharks. Really poor performance by the Bulldogs, man. Uh, Drew Hutchison just can't be in that starting side. Maybe off the bench one day when there's injuries and stuff, but his performance last week for a side that needed to get a home win, there were errors galore and, yeah, an awful performance. Uh, as for the Bulldogs, they were obviously welcomed back with Stephen Crichton, uh, a few missing. And, and this week, the controversy surrounding Josh Adokar, which I won't comment on, and we'll see what happens with that scenario, but that's obviously going to play into their minds as well. But this team has shown that they can attack. This team has shown that they can defend. And 2024 is meant to be, by stats, the year of the Dogs. So... It's tough because the last two weeks, they've shown me that they're just ready to walk out right now. And they've waited eight years for this, and their fans will turn up. There will be a crowd of at least 50,000. I reckon there'll be 54,000 there on Sunday. I reckon there'll be a massive crowd. Shout out to James Graham as well, who's bought extra tickets. And when fans are messaging him on Instagram, he's giving them tickets. It's absolutely crazy. It's so good what they're doing. You've got a manly side who, again, is almost like a dark horse have beaten and or, or been in good performances if they haven't beaten some good teams this season. Luke Brooks finally playing finals. That's a big storyline as well that's been overshadowed by the Bulldogs one this week. Uh, 
Jarrell Skelton was really poor a couple weeks ago against the Manly Seagulls, so he needs to be better here. Burton is a massive inclusion, but you've still got so much experience with Cherry Evans and Trevojevic. I was tempted to go with the Dogs 13+, plus at home, get a nice win for their fans, advance, but I just don't see it happening. I think this game is going to be close, but I think that the Bulldogs win. I think they've waited a long time for this. I think they're going to have a big week preparing for this game, and they're going to come out and be too good for Manly. So I'm going to go with the Bulldogs to win by eight. I feel like it will be a low-scoring game, so I will go with something like a 22 Bulldogs, a Manly 14 in this one. Bulldogs win by eight points. Uh, I will go with Connor Tracy to score the first try of the match for this one, the lethal fullback. And as for an anytime try score for Manly, uh, it's almost not even value anymore because he's just going down and down. Tommy Talao, his try scoring form has been fantastic. I think Manly season may just come to an end on Sunday. My tips for NRL Finals Week 1. I'll try and get my tips out a bit earlier for you guys next week. Make sure you let me know your tips in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. As you're getting ready for you know the finals, there's plenty of vlogs to check out on the channel as well. So check those out. Also check the link in the description. Download TBC Live today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. At 5,000 subscribers, I am going to be giving away a 2025 NRL membership because we didn't get to do it this year. And yeah, those are my tips for the week. And I'll see you guys.